Mississippi, Virginia, plotting to spark a slave insurrection. Jamie, we are standing at the location of the United States Arsenal building. On this footprint. On this footprint. You, in fact, are actually on the foundation of the structure as it was. We had 100,000 weapons stored here and in an adjoining building. Brown needed these weapons to start this war against slavery. Pretty ambitious. Notwithstanding Dennis Fry's good work uh, at Harper's Ferry, there's a real problem with this notion that has become orthodoxy uh, for so many historians. In fact, many concepts of the Harper's Ferry raid are mistaken. A lot of them are based upon Southern propaganda and the fact that the raid was interpreted from the very beginning through the Southern press from slaveholders and, and pro-slavery politicians and that there was there would have been actually no free state representation in the journalists covering the the aftermath of the Harper's Ferry raid were it not for the stealth work of Ned House uh, from the New York Tribune who posed as a pro-slavery person and stayed in Charlestown and quite successfully documented John Brown's last days something that I have looked at extensively in my book about Brown's last days in Virginia as a prisoner and certainly this issue that I'd like to address here, uh, that Dennis says that he wanted all these weapons, but the reality is that this is just not the case. First of all, and I think it's important to point out, that John Brown himself more than once specifically denied that he went to Harper's Ferry to get the weapons. According to, for instance, Ned House incognito, in the New York Tribune in early November 59, after uh, interviewing Brown, he summarizes Brown's words as such. This is a quote. He had calculated upon and fully expected to accomplish a rescue of a great number of slaves. To maintain a warlike position in Virginia for any definite period was not his object. The idea of his seizing the armory for the sake of the weapons it contained, he will not admit. He says he had far better weapons of his own. Similarly, he told a New York Times correspondent that it was no part of his purpose to seize the public arms. He had arms and ammunition enough. And as far as the seizure of Harper's Ferry, he really intended that to be, according to, again, this interview, the first demonstration at this point. What he elsewhere referred to as a discriminating blow at slavery. I'm actually reading this out of Freedom's Dawn, my book. The point being that this notion that he wanted the weapons um, just doesn't make any sense. It's become a mainstay of historical narration that Brown uh, attacked in the armory to seize the weapons. But just as he always denied that he intended to incite bloody insurrection, Brown emphasized repeatedly that he had not come there to take the weapons. Following his defeat, the only weapons found in his wagon were his own. The Sharps rifles he had brought to Harper's Ferry actually were superior to the percussion muskets and muzzle-loading rifles produced and held at the armory. Evidently, raiders posted at the arsenal were not sent there to end, but to prevent townsmen from gaining access to its stores. And despite all claims otherwise, the only substantial testimony regarding Brown's men and the Harper's Ferry Rifles was made by W.S. Downer, the master armorer's clerk, who stated that the raiders broke open the arsenal and took out two, not 20, not, not 200, but two boxes of muskets. Whether or not the raiders thought to complement their weapon stores with a meager two boxes of muskets, the notion that Brown's insurrection, in quotes, at Harper's Ferry was centered on seizing the arsenal of weapons and arming thousands of liberated blacks is little more than a southern legend. 